Your keyword is the most important thing when it comes to actually selling high content books on Amazon. You can have the best book in the world, the best cover, the best title, but if there's too much competition and more importantly, not enough demand, you're simply not going to sell any books. You're going to want to get a pen and paper out for this one because I'm going in deep with my high content keyword research process and I'm going to show you exactly how to actually find winning keywords, not these surface level keywords that the keyword tool tell you are good, the ones that are actually good. So let's waste no time and get right into the video. All right, high content keyword research. The first thing we have to do is we have to look for one keyword. We're not going to worry about how many keywords or searches we can rank for because all we want is one. This is a common mistake that people make is they're always looking for a general idea and how many different topics or searches they can rank for. And what happens is when you publish this way, you're not going to really rank on anything and you're not going to target any specific audience, which leads to you not selling any books. Let's say if I find a keyword Greek mythology that has some promise, I only care about the search results for page one for this one search to actually validate and see if it's a winning keyword, unless it's actually my keyword. I don't care about Greek mythology for beginners, Greek mythology for kids, I don't care about Greek mythology for baby elephants, and I don't care what the publishing tools or keyword tools tell me. All I care about is the relevance of this search for the one main keyword that I'm trying to rank for. So why is this important? We want to focus on one place to actually accurately predict the keyword's validity. You need one main search term with one main traffic source to target. This is how you sell high content books. You find one search term with one main traffic source. You make a high quality book targeting that specific traffic source and their specific problems, and you're going to speak right to them. You need to see the specific traffic source you're targeting in order to fully predict how your book is actually going to do. One strong keyword and search term can generate thousands of dollars for your book and if you actually rank for this one main search term, you'll notice that you're going to rank for anything relevant as well. We find one main search term and create a book targeting that one specific person who's searching it. There's no confusion. They search up the topic, they see your book, and it's directly targeting that person, and they buy it if you've executed properly. A good keyword has thousands of people searching the main search term every single month. And if the keyword has the parameters that I'm about to show you, your book is going to be seen by these searches. If we can't make money from one keyword, why do we expect to make money ranking for 100 of them? Focus on the one, and then your book will rank for anything relevant, and that's how you properly make sales with high content books. So now that we have a list of keywords to properly validate, we have to actually go and see if they're any good and we do this by proving if we're going to sell or proving that we're not going to sell which is a very important metric so we have to ask ourselves if i have a book targeting the topic effectively with a good cover and around 10 to 20 reviews will i realistically sell you will sell if we can find proof of this there are other books in this position selling. There's less than 100 reviews on them, and they have a BSR of less than 50,000. But, and there's a big but here, is that this metric is not hard to find. You can spend five minutes on Amazon and find this metric. What makes this metric valuable is when you pair with a limited number of these, there's only a few books that actually have low reviews and that are selling well. There's limited big books or authority figures. These are books that have over 500 reviews, so it shows that there's not a lot of competition. And of course, the most important thing we get to look for is that there's limited dead books. Limited dead books are books that have 75 plus reviews with a BSR of 100,000 or more. We can't really have more than four of these. And if we do have a lot of these, it has to be because they have a bad cover or they're just not a good book. Basically, any relevant book on the topic is doing well. This shows us that the demand and outpaces the supply of books. Proving that you can't sell is so much more important than proving if you can. When deciding if a keyword is good, it's not just about the quality or the numbers. We need to think about where we actually fit in and ask ourselves, can we realistically rank where people will see us? This is so important. If the keyword has the best numbers in the world, but if you really look at it, you can't realistically rank somewhere where people are going to see it, you're not going to sell any books. In many cases, there's more evidence that we can't do this rather than we can. So let's go over an example that I think happens to a lot of publishers in this regard. Let's say we find a keyword called raised bed gardening. So we find three winning books, we find less than two authority figures, and we think we hit the jackpot. And this is what a lot of publishers do. They'll stop here, think they have a winning keyword, and they'll go and publish a book. But what they don't realize is if you keep scrolling and you look a bit further, you're going to see a book with 100 reviews. 300,000 BSR. A book with 200 reviews, 300,000 BSR. Another book with 89 reviews, 500,000 BSR. Another dead book. Another one. 38 reviews, a million BSR. 119 reviews with an actually nice cover and desirable title. 
249,000 BSR and another one. And what's going to happen is if you publish in these topics, your book's just going to get slapped right here. And this is a big reason that beginner publishers don't do well and it's something that I call the blob effect. There's a lot of books that look similar and have a similar amount of reviews and they all just get blobbed together and basically just look like one big thing that nobody pays attention to. When this happens, what people do is they just gravitate to the books with the highest ranking, the most reviews, or have the most desirable cover that just stands out. So if you can't get to one of the books with the highest ranking, with the most reviews, or with the best cover, you have to steer clear of these keywords and this is basically all beginners in my opinion unless you're a veteran publisher you're not going to know the steps to properly do this effectively this is why your first high content book doesn't sell it's just caught the blob and nobody pays attention to it you don't have a good keyword or you simply just don't have the skills yet to stand out and to target the topic effectively so that leads us to the main reason why people fail with high content publishing is they find this metric they find the winning metric low review books with high bsrs but they forget that the keyword also has 10 authority figures, 30 books with over 50 reviews that all kind of look the same and they're all not really selling. And a ton of recently published dead books, so books that have less than 20 reviews that aren't selling. And they publish their first book and they wonder why it doesn't sell because it just gets caught in the blob with everything else. Why would it sell? If you don't know how to effectively separate yourself like a veteran publisher would, you need to find a winning keyword. And this is where the beginners need to go is they need to spend more time actually looking for proper keywords and not just using these keyword tools to find something in a couple days and then think they hit the jackpot because it's not going to work out. The secret to finding a keyword that is a winner for high content books is the demand outnumbers the supply. There are more customers than there are books to supply them. So this isn't easy to find, but they're out there. And the people who spend the time to find it will realize that when you do find it, your book's just going to sell. It's going to be effortless. It's going to have like 15 reviews and it's going to make a thousand dollars a month. So we have to look for the winning metric, the low reviewed books with the high BSRs without all the losing metrics, the dead books, the authority figures, the high search results. So now getting into the parameters of these winning keywords, we want to start with low search results, 1,000 to 5,000, even a little less. We don't want 20,000 search results. It's just showing that there's saturation or there's lots of sub niches within it that also rank in the main keyword that we're looking at. And then of course we want low competition. The books that we're actually going to be up against don't have 600 reviews. They have low reviews. There's not too many of them and we can easily fit our book into the first page and make some sales. And of course we want low BSRs, low best selling ranks not so we can just compete with them but so we can actually see that there's traffic going to the keyword and of course like we just talked about low dead books we don't want books with over 50 reviews tons of them that aren't selling this is just showing you that there's not much demand and that we're going to be caught in this blob too why would we be different one of the most important things as well is low authority figures we don't want books with over 500 reviews taking up all the space on the first page because we're not going to be able to rank there and we're not going to be able to compete with them and finally we want to find a specific topic we don't want just a subtopic of something else or something that's kind of a gray area that lots of people would be interested in we're going to talk about that later but basically to simplify these parameters the only actual books targeting the keyword that we're looking at are doing well this is just proving that the demand outpaces the supply because everything there is selling so if we publish a book why wouldn't our sell too all the books that are there have low reviews are selling well and there's not too many of them so we can easily rank on the first page and take a bit of that traffic. So now let's hop into the computer quickly and actually see what this would look like on an Amazon page so we can further understand what we're looking for. So let's have a look at a visual example. So this is a great example because I still wouldn't necessarily publish in this keyword so you guys don't have to fight over it but I think it's a good example of finding what we're actually looking for so we know what it looks like. So let's have a look at the keyword emotional intelligence and see what it looks like. So right off the bat you have the main books that are all selling well. Of course they have high reviews so we're not going to be able to compete with these as much. But what makes this keyword something that we would look for is that very quickly you realize that it kind of goes into books that aren't even relevant at all. So if you even go to the second page, and now I mentioned that the first page is all you need, which in theory it is. But for the sake of the example, when you go into the second page, you're starting to see books that have nothing to do with the topic. Self-love workbook, stop overthinking, the power of discipline. Yeah, there's a few emotional intelligent books, but most of the time they have no reviews or a bad cover or they're brand new. But it basically stops. So what this is telling us is that all the relevant books for emotional intelligence are right here. They're literally right here. You can count them on one hand, the books that people are actually going to be drawn to. So hypothetically, if these books here all had low reviews, selling well, so all we have to do is make a relevant book and the odds of us ranking on the first page is almost a guarantee. Because if you're publishing in a topic like raised bed gardening for beginners, you could probably go through five or 10 pages and you're still going to find books on raised bed gardening. So what are the chances of you ranking on the first page? But the chances of us ranking on this first page is extremely high because there's literally only a handful of relevant books 
So if you just make a relevant enough book targeting the specific topic very precisely, Amazon's going to see and say, oh great, another emotional intelligence book. Let's toss on the first page because we need more of them. So if you find this type of keyword where there's only a handful of relevant books, but all those relevant books are actually doing well, then you found the gold. You found the keyword that all you have to do is make a book, targeting the topic effectively, get your initial 20 reviews, you're going to rank at the first page and be seen by everybody else and all the traffic that's going there. And if you do every other step properly, you nail the title, you nail the targeting, you nail the cover, you create a good product page. It doesn't matter how many reviews you have because there's so much traffic and such little competition and such little supply that you're going to get thousands of people clicking on your book and hundreds of sales a month. And if you're wondering, this green tool is actually the book beam tool. It's probably one of the only tools that I actually recommend. And the reason I like it is because of course you have the main BSR ranks right on the first page here. But when you click on the book, you can actually further validate the topic. So if these books don't have a lot of reviews and maybe it might just be an anomaly or maybe it might just be a trendy topic, you can go and check. You can go and look at their BSR history on their product page and see if this book has actually been selling over a long period of time or if it's just, you know, a trend. So depending on the plan that you have, you can actually go back a year or even all time and look at the BSR history and you can just go and see, oh, this book has been consistently selling well basically for the last six months. So link in the description if you want to check it out and get a bit of a discount. So now that we have a rough understanding of what we're looking for, let's actually go a bit deeper and understand how to find these keywords. So when it comes to high content publishing, there are two types of keywords surface level keywords and what I call deep sea keywords. I'm sure you've all seen a surface level keyword before. Raised bed gardening, greenhouse gardening, cognitive behavioral therapy, stock trading for beginners, strength training for seniors, anything in craft, hobbies, and home, some sort of trendy diet, the list goes on. You've probably seen this before or you probably even have a book in one of these. And of course you can still have success in these keywords. I like to steer beginners away from them and let me tell you why. 99% of new publishers are going to stay here and publish books here. So this leads to a lot of dead books. There are lots of books that look the same, that are just okay, that kind of clog the keywords. So even if you do come in and you have a bit more experience and you make a better book, it's very easy to get lost in all of the saturation. They can also be misleading in keyword tools. Lots of these keywords will always come up in these keyword tools as winning keywords and then people will go and publish in them and they won't do very good with their books. That's because hypothetically they have good numbers but you need to look further. I'd say these keywords are fine for more veteran publishers but are going to be quite difficult for beginners because they're not going to be able to stand out. And probably the main reason why I don't like these keywords is they're easy to find. I'm sure most of you have seen if not published in one of these keywords. And if you scroll Amazon for five minutes you're probably going to find one. Why do we expect to just publish a book in a keyword that we found in 20 minutes and expect it to do better than everybody else self-publishing. And another thing that people overlook with these keywords is they're horrible for advertising. There's tons of people advertising in them. It's hard to actually stand out when you get those placements. And there's lots of kind of intertwining topics. So they have multiple subtopics, but they all advertise to each other. They're not hard to find. They're good on paper, but they're often misleading. So that leads us to deep sea keywords, which I think is where the money is. Of course, deep sea keywords are hard to find. They take a lot of time to find, but you can't be afraid to spend some time on your keyword research. The barrier to entry might be a bit harder than let's say a gardening book. It might be a bit more technical. You might have to put a bit more research in, but that's okay. But the important thing is the demand outnumbers the supply. So it's going to be easy to put our book in front of lots of people. And like we talked about, the only relevant books in the topic are actually selling. This makes it easy to validate them and easy to see if it's actually going to be possible for us to make sales as well. And another very important thing that people don't talk about when it comes to keyword research is there are few subgenres in the deep sea keywords. What I mean by this is the keywords are usually singular topics, emotional intelligence, therapeutic yoga. The topics are new with lots of demand and low competition with few subgenres because the keyword simply hasn't been around long enough or been found enough to warrant lots of different subgenres. And why this is really important when you're publishing high content books is let's say your keyword is cognitive behavioral therapy workbook for beginners, a common niche that lots of you have probably seen. The numbers are pretty good, but people forget that there's also cognitive behavioral therapy workbooks for women, for teens, for anxiety, for depression. And they're hypothetically different, but they're extremely interlinked. Customers are receptive to all these. They might be a teen with anxiety, a teen with depression, a beginner who's a woman. So they're not just searching up their one specific problem. It's like, oh, this book's for me. They're searching up CBT workbook for beginners, but seeing an advertisement for CBT workbook for women or for teens or for anxiety. And all these are different keywords, but they're advertising to the same stuff. And the person is going to be receptive to these same things. So you have to factor in the results for all of them. If CBT workbook for beginners, for women, for teens, for anxiety, for depression, if those are all good keywords, 
then it might be worth going into. But if only one of them is good and they're all bad, you can't expect to just publish in the one that's good and do well because you're forgetting how interlinked that they are and how receptive these people are going to be to all these topics. And they're going to easily find a different book that's better than yours, even if it's a different topic. This can't happen with deep sea keywords because you're finding a specific topic and there's only traffic going to that topic. There's not a bunch of other sub niches. But this also is a bonus because you can actually create a subtopic. If there's not lots of competition and there's not really any subtopics, maybe you can have a different angle. If there's enough traffic, you can make an emotional intelligence book for the workplace. And now there's going to be absolutely no competition, but you still know that there's traffic going to these keywords. So going back to the horrible for advertising, like I mentioned, that people who are advertising their CBT workbook for beginners are also going to advertise it to teens for anxiety, for depression. So they're going to advertise to all these places. So you're not just competing with the specific topic you're in. You're now competing with several other topics. In lots of cases, deep sea keywords don't have this problem. You're targeting one specific thing, there's limited books targeting it, which makes your bids cheap and your placements easy to get, which makes your books seen by lots of people very easily. When you have a keyword that's very targeted, that has low competition, that has lots of people searching it, you don't realize how easy it really is to publish a successful book in these topics. But more often than not, people find these surface level keywords where on paper on these keyword tools are good and they publish in them and they wonder why they don't have success. So the main reason I don't like surface level keywords is you can almost validate pretty much 90% of them, but they're hard to actually succeed in because we ignore some very important factors. So how do we actually find these deep sea keywords? Like I talked about the parameters, we have to bump down our metrics. We have to have a keyword that has limited winning books, just a few winning books that have low reviews and low BSRs to tell us that it's not hard to create a book that's successful in this topic. We want the demand to outpace the supply. We want limited dead books. We don't want too many books that have over 50 reviews that aren't selling. And we don't want to just get caught in that blob. And that's what happens with a lot of surface level keywords. Basically, we want as many books doing well and as little books doing poorly as we can find. If there are books on the topic that aren't doing well, there has to be a reason. They have to have a bad cover, a bad title. They have to be brand new with no reviews. If you see multiple books where you think to yourself, why would this book not be selling? This is a bad sign. This is telling you that maybe the ones that are selling are more of an anomaly and we have to actually prove that we can sell, not prove that we can't. And of course, we have to have limited competition. The only real books in the topic are selling and doing okay. And any book that's not relevant or not executed well isn't. And these are all books that are targeting the topic effectively. They look professional with a nice cover. They have over 25 reviews. They're all selling. What this is doing is just proving that there's lots of demand, but not enough books to supply it. So your book's going to rank high very quickly with minimal reviews views for all the traffic that's there to see it. Everyone's going to flock to your book if it's executed well because there's nowhere else to go. There's not books 10 pages in. All the relevant books are on the first page. So why wouldn't your book go to the first page? So Ken, if this is so easy, then why isn't everyone finding them and why haven't I found any? Simply because nobody looks. Most people I've interacted with or seen in the publishing space maybe spent a week on keyword research. They brushed over the surface, they found a few topics, made a list of the top 20, which I can almost predict are the same with every single single new publisher, they're going to find the same top 20 keywords. And that's it. You want to find a winning keyword? Spend a month, even two. They're there. You just haven't looked hard enough and long enough. My two main keywords that I make a majority of my royalties for took me a month each time to find it of searching for keywords every single day. Everyone spends about a week scrolls around the surface of Amazon, finds these keywords that have hypothetically good numbers on these keyword tools, and then think they found some gold. Don't spend a week up here scrolling around on the surface. Spend a month diving deep into Amazon and finding the gold. So Ken, what am I supposed to do? Open an incognito or private browser and go and look. Go and look at every bestseller category. Go look at trend websites. Search random ideas you may have. Look at recommended books on product pages of other books. What are they about? How are they selling? Use your eyes with these new parameters that I've given you and go and make a list of actually deep and hard to find keywords. Look for very specific searches or topics. We're not just looking for keywords. When I say keyword, I mean it's the topic we're publishing in. But what people often mess up is they find the main keyword, which is the main topic, cognitive behavioral therapy. That's not that good. But then they'll find cognitive behavioral therapy for beginners and the keyword will suddenly magically be good with these keyword tools. But it's the same thing. People are going to be targeting both of those keywords. It's not a topic. Find a specific topic that sells well. And of course, all the relevant data you need is going to be mostly on page one and maybe on page two. You want the first half of the page to be doing well, selling well, where the books are actually targeting the keyword and it's very aligned. And then by the end of the first page, everything kind of dies off and there's books on different topics now. This is telling us all the traffic is flocking to the main books at the top and there's not enough demand to supply them because by the end of the first page, it's already into a different topic because people haven't found it yet. It's deep. It's a deep 
C keyword. It's not just a service level keyword where there's thousands of books in them. So now I'm going to hop in the computer once again and show you my process and what I actually do to find these keywords. So there's two things that I use to find these keywords. So these are things that you don't need, but just if you're wondering how exactly how I do it, this is what I use. I use either the BookBeam niche finder. This is something I talked about in my low content keyword research video. It's essentially with the BookBeam tool, you can just basically plug in the parameters of a winning book and it's going to show you all the winning books that fall under those parameters. Low reviews, low BSR, newer, only the first three months has been published and then you can actually refine it a bit more. It's not going to be perfect. You're not going to find tons of winning keywords, but it's definitely a way to maybe find some untapped keywords because there's some new books selling well that you can potentially go and look at and see if it's worth publishing in. And then of course, the BSR history. When I find these keywords and make a list of them, I'm going to go to the main books in these topics and actually validate and make sure that they've been selling for the last six months to a year. I don't want to publish in a trendy topic that's going to die off. I want to publish in a topic that I know is going to stand the test of time and my book is going to sell well for years to come. Like I mentioned, check out BookBeam in the description for a little discount. These are definitely not necessary to use, but I just use them because they go alongside with me looking for keywords alongside my eyes and it just works really well to pair them together and cover all your bases. So before we go into Amazon and look for our keywords, we have to find a place to put them if we find some potential candidates. So this is the kind of spreadsheet that I would use to record my keywords and validate them. So I don't have a downloadable version of this yet, but you're welcome to take a screenshot and copy it for yourself. What I will do is simply just have the first column as the keyword. Then I have number of winning books. These are books with a low BSR, low reviews, the number of authority figures. So books that have over 500 reviews. Then of course, the number of search results, the number of dead books in the topic. These are books with 50 reviews and up that are not selling. I asked myself, is it a trend? So if you do have the book beam tool, you can go and check the BSR history on some of the selling books and see how long the keyword has been doing well. So the seventh column is the barrier to entry. Can I realistically make book that competes with the books that are here? Is it an extremely technical topic where my book's going to be no good or is it a bit tougher but if I put in the time and research I can create a good book so you have to ask yourself this because we don't want to go into a topic that's very complicated and we end up making a bad book that gets bad reviews and then the final thing I ask is based on all these parameters can I realistically rank on page one so of course you have to judge this for yourself I mean, if you do want me to judge it, you're welcome to book a consulting call in the description and I can go over your keyword for you, go over the process and see if you found any winners. But all in all, you can fill these out. You can make them different colors based on the metric if they fall in the proper ones that we're looking for and determine if it's a good keyword to go into and if you can realistically rank on page one. So if these were all red or orange, maybe it wouldn't be a very good keyword, but considering that they're all green based on the metrics I put in, realistically speaking, I should be able to rank on page one. There's not too many dead books. There's only a little bit more authority figures than I like. It's right in the sweet spot of winning books. There's not too many search results. So yeah, I should be able to rank on page one with this keyword. All right, so now let's go into Amazon and let me show you exactly what I actually do. So it's not much different than my first keyword research video I made, you're essentially just going to look. Now you know what to look for a bit deeper based on what we just talked about in this video, but you're now going to look at Amazon with a new perspective and a new time frame in mind. You're going to slow it down. You're going to take your time. You're going to try to go deep. You're going to avoid just keywords that you find very quickly, and you're going to go and see if you can find some real gold. So once we're on the bestsellers tab, we're simply just going to make sure it's an incognito window. Use a VPN if you have it, and you're going to want to change your postal code or zip code to a US-based zip code. We want to see the search results in US, and we want an incognito window so that we're not skewing the results, and Amazon is taking our own search results or interest into account. And then you're just going to look. You're just going to go through these categories on the side here, and go as deep as you can, and continue to work your way through and see what you could find. So what I usually do is I go very deep into things that I'm interested in, and the deeper you go, you're going to notice you're going to get away from the professional or the 5,000 review books, and you're going to find some more self-published books. So you're simply just going to go into as many categories as you can. Even if something you're not really sure about, go into history, go into finance, just go into anything you can. You never know what you're going to find. I found successful book brands that are clearly self-published in the history topic. It's always the topics that you never expect to be good that are going to be really, really good. It's not just going to be the surface level ones. So once you're deep in these categories, now you're just going to start looking at the books in them and asking yourself, what are these books about? Here's a keyword here, pricing products, energy trading and investing. So these are all potential keywords. And then you're going to go even further. You're going to click on some of these books and go and look at the book that it recommends you on these book pages. So these are going to be topics as well. What are these books about? Here's another one on pricing. So you're going to just keep going, go further and further, do this in every category, and eventually you're going to have a list of keywords. If you don't want to clutter up your spreadsheet with a bunch of crap, you can do what I do, which is I kind of validate them on the fly. I know what I'm looking for. I have the tools to help me. So I'll just check. So right here, I see a book on psychology of pricing. 
has 170 reviews, not really selling very well, but sometimes I'll just go ahead, check the BSR history, see what the topic has been doing, but overall not doing very well, but sometimes I'll go even further, I'll search the topic up and I'll just validate them on the fly rather than having a massive list to go back to. Because right away with this keyword, I can tell it's not selling well. There's really no books doing well, so it's not even worth recording and checking later. So what's going to happen, guys, is you're going to find a lot of keywords like this. You're going to find a whole lot of crap that's basically nothing. But that's okay because you're going in this with a new mentality, knowing that for every hundred bad keywords you're going to find, you might find one good one. And you're going to go in this with a mindset knowing you're going to spend two, three, four weeks doing this because if you spend the time to do it and if you actually find one of these real winning deep sea keywords, you're going to finally understand how people publish a book and make five grand a month right away. It's the keyword and it's targeting that keyword effectively. Yes, for every hundred service level keywords, there might be three deep sea keywords or even less, but that's why they are so good. If you're willing to put in the time to search every inch of Amazon, every inch of trend websites to find these keywords, you're going to be rewarded. Put in the time, I promise you it's worth it because putting in the time, you just separated yourself from 99% of self-publishers. Spend the time to find a winning keyword, Pair with a high quality book that's targeting that specific search term, the professional cover, and you're going to basically win Amazon and you're really going to figure it out. If you want to know how to target this properly, I have a book title video and a book cover video. The most important part of the process, definitely go and watch these if you found your keyword and you're ready to create a desirable book. But before then, slow it down, take your time and go and find these winning keywords because I promise you they're out there and they're going to change everything. Your keyword is the most important factor when it comes to actually selling books on Amazon. Not enough people spend enough time on this and not enough people know how to actually do it properly. I promise you if you truly understand what I've just taught you in this video, you will find a winning keyword and you'll finally understand how people have success on Amazon. Don't go to where the crowd is going, separate yourself, spend the time and find these deep sea keywords and you'll do fine. So that's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.